Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks very much for, for allowing Kryptonian like me to come to Jobo again and have a shower. Uh, very tough time at the moment, so I appreciate the opportunity. Um, if you don't mind making it a bit interactive, you, you can look around yourself, because I want you to understand how, how big that problem is at the moment, is how many people in this room have suffered from, no, suffered from quick heart fraud uh, in the past 10 years? Please raise your hand. Look around. Now, I want to find out from you, I'm not talking about debit order, but we're talking about EFT payment. What I'd like to know, hello? What I'd like to know is how many people in this room have suffered from um, EFT fraud by someone hacking into your online banking profile? Please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five people. So it gives you an indication of the risk that there is of uh, transacting our days in, in, in using credit card and the efficiency and security that you have around uh, bank to bank payment. So just, a, just a brief history about iPay and, and, and what we do. Ultimately, what we're trying to do basically is provide merchants and businesses one single integration in all major banks in order to basically allow them to process payment. We basically give our clients the opportunity to let a consumer pay within 10 seconds um, with a product that has no fraud and no chargeback. The past four years, basically, we've dedicated um, our, our goal in growing as uh, expert in the open banking uh, industry, which is basically about to revolutionize uh, payments in Europe, in America, but also Africa. Uh, what's very interesting is, if you think about the South African market, there's actually more people that have bank accounts than there's people that have actually car. So it's quite interesting that there's such a focus on car payment nowadays, when actually there would be such less friction uh, using EFT payment in a more uh, frictionless way. Just a bit uh, of an indication of some of our clients. Um, so we've been running for three and a half years, and we have today just under 2,000 clients, and we started basically getting approached for the past year by some of the global brands. Um, so an indication of some of them would be Adia, which is the third largest basically payment service provider in the world, uh, and we also have some international clients like Sage, where we work in you know, multiple countries together and not only South Africa. Um, these are some of the clients. Basically, what IPay does is allow our merchants to basically accept payment online through so an e commerce platform via uh, SMS uh, push notification or also through QR and in app application. So, a lot of our big partners are these basically, are, like DHL as an example, are one payment service provider for the e commerce platform another service provider for the point of sale, and it's becoming basically cumbersome to be able to do reconciliation and automation around all of this. So the one-stop solution that we offer to them basically uh, becomes very attractive. Um, this is basically a gross indicator about our business, just to give you an idea of what we've been able to achieve over the past uh, three and a half years. And this is basically an indication of the three years target that we have. And obviously, the challenge that you have is young entrepreneurs and startups like us, when we get to pitch to VCs like Kellen, um, they always get to see those Excel sheets. And the question they have is, what do you have to back it up in order to basically make sure that you're going to achieve your target? And I think what's been very interesting from our perspective is we've been able to pitch to about 150 uh, different VCs over the past three years. And we've been able to educate ourselves with what is required not from a VC perspective to convince them to basically invest in us, but to make sure that our business is safe and sound in order to basically grow according to, to, to our projection. And what we did basically is work for a year period, understanding all the various industries that could basically use our product, all the different channels that could basically use our product, and also uh, understand the conversion rate that we have with our client. And what we did is we looked at basically the 200 clients that we have at the moment or that we're busy engaging with in, in the next uh, two years that have uh, an opportunity to process in excess of 10 million with us through EFT volume with the conversion rate they have and this is how we got to that basically. So what's interesting is when we did actually our first financial forecast about three and a half years ago, uh, we've been accurate to date in our growth at about 
10 to 20 percent margin error. What's very interesting is um, I wasn't very lucky in terms of education. I left school at 16 because I said it was a cool move to do. Um, and then I really realized at an uh, earlier age in my, in my entrepreneur's career that uh, it was important to basically educate yourself. But more importantly is that if you want to make a success in our business, is that you need to surround yourself with people that are actually more clever than you. So if you look at some of, of, of the C-suite and, and, and colleagues that we have, um, you don't understand why basically we've got such high caliber of people working with us. But I think what's also very interesting to mention is when you look at some of the competitors that we have in the landscape, and I mentioned some names like Zapper and Snapscan as an example, they have an average of 120 to 200 staff working for them, and they've got similar, uh, for some of them less, uh, processing volume of processing transactions per month. What's very interesting is that we've got a test of the employees that they have and we're able to achieve better results. In terms of basically our, our expansion, like I mentioned earlier on that in Europe there's a big change that's happening in terms of open banking. And this is a directive called PSD2. What PSD2 means is basically that all the banks now have to open uh, a channel of communication with third party suppliers and fintech as are accredited in order to allow the push and pull of information, but also of, of payment. Um, what's very interesting in terms of stat is the predict that in the next 10 years in Europe, 43% of payments will be done via EFT, um, which will leave basically credit card with only a 57% market. My prediction is that in the next 20 years, you will actually not have a credit card or a plastic anymore that you carry around. And the majority of those payments will be done via EFT today. If you look at the evolution of payment, we went from cash society to check to car. The normal evolution is not an app that's going to be basically storing your car detail to automate the payment, but that's going to be an app that's going to be basically using a uh, banking suite like iPay in order to automate those payments in a much quicker and safer way than car. So where we are at the moment is we've been able to basically grow in Nigeria and South Africa. We've just obtained our license in Australia and we're basically uh, finalizing our European license as well as our Kenyan license. The reason for that is because we realized that it was key for us to have the three main countries in Africa uh, in order to basically uh, be able to, to be competitive and interesting for global players to partner with us. Uh, what's very interesting is we just finalized our integration with Facebook um, and we should be going live uh, hopefully within the next few weeks. Um, and this is a type of technology and innovation that they're looking for in companies like ours in order to basically uh, process the claim. Um, we're looking at establishing our, our, our new office. We're currently in Johannesburg and Cape Town. And we're looking at establishing another office in Amsterdam in order to basically, uh, from June, start uh, processing transaction in the European market. This is I know there's always a lot of questions around security, especially when there's a lot of misunderstanding around it. Um, from a security perspective, what iPay does basically is pretty similar to what the Airbnb, the Uber, and many other tech companies do, is basically rely on the infrastructure of others in order to basically provide a service. So from a security perspective, we still rely on the infrastructure of the bank in order to facilitate the payment. This is our website. If you guys are interested and you want to sign up, obviously I'll be happy to basically uh, uh, engage with you. And uh, if you've got any questions, I'll be available after uh, until 10 before I'm back to Cape Town. Thank you.